afternoon from the 2023 IAPA Expo here in Orlando, Florida. If you're not familiar with IAPA, it is the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions, and this is their annual expo. And this is the biggest themed entertainment industry event of the year. So every single aspect of the themed entertainment industry or amusement parks and attractions comes here to showcase their wares, to make announcements, to do and find new things and it's such a fun event to come to. So here we'll find everything from food vendors to flooring vendors to roller coaster wheel vendors to roller coaster vendors to the amusement parks themselves and everything in between. So it's gonna be an exciting time, it always is. I'm very excited to see what all we can see in there. It is wild. As soon as we walk in, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a lot of stuff to see and a lot of stuff to do, and we're probably not gonna be able to cover all of it today. So we're gonna try to get through as much as we can, and we're gonna see a few new things. So like for instance, some of the roller coaster manufacturers and theme parks have joined together to bring out new roller coaster cars or make announcements for new roller coasters, and they have them on display here. So let's head inside, see what we can find. And just kind of like explore IAPA Expo 2023. This event typically is open to anybody as long as you are a member of IAPA and then you still have to buy tickets to the event. You can buy non-member tickets. They're just a little bit more expensive. I am here on a press pass. So we're able to show off everything because we're here as members of the press. Angry Birds, right off the bat, as soon as we're making our way in. Angry Birds, Red's Ride. Contact the Angry Birds team. All right, we've made it onto the show floor, and we'll actually put a link down below to some of our previous videos from years past, so you guys can kind of get an idea of what it's like here. First thing we need to do is have a look at the floor map and figure out where we're going. So many things to try to figure out. Sometimes I feel like it's just easier to wander around and find things that you find, so. We are here. Let's just start making our way in. So over here at B&M, we have a few ride vehicles on display. One is actually in operation currently, and that is Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger, very similar to Sheikra at Busch Gardens. But then also, just revealed yesterday, is the ride vehicle for Penguin Trek, which is coming to SeaWorld Orlando. And it's cool. It looks like a snowmobile. Oh, yes. So this is a family launching coaster. It's gonna be very, very exciting. This is coming this year to SeaWorld Orlando. It will go up to 43 miles per hour, and the height requirement is 42 inches. Maximum height requirement is 77 inches, though. Just beware of that. And this is a launch coaster. And of course, every year, there's always some rides here. We got a little roller coaster over here that people are riding, and a little drop tower over there. Fun thing about this is these are all for sale. Like, you could buy this if you come here. There's a ride over here called Dance Party. It's like a Tilt-A-Whirl, but a little bit smaller. Over here at SNS, they have the ride vehicle for a new Transformers ride. Look at this. You can see where it attaches to the track up there. It's actually two tracks, one on the other side. And then this hangs down. You can kind of see. Oh, yeah. That looks exciting, doesn't it? That'd be kind of cool to have one. Wow, does look like fun for sure. Over here at Vacoma, in collaboration with Holiday World, they're opening up a coaster called Good Gravy. And the coaster cars look like gravy boats. Look at this. The very first one has the gravy spilling over the top. And <laughs> look. Look at this, and they also have an accessible seat here. So they have a little door, so that if you need to transfer from a wheelchair, you can just kind of slide right in. Uh, how nice is that? But yeah, this is amazing. Such a fun idea for a roller coaster. Oh, and look, the back one has a little handle on it. Like it was a gravy boat. And it has all these fun filigree, like corn and pumpkins and squash and garlic and mushrooms. Man, such a fun roller coaster idea. And they kind of have it, like a description, or a, a preview of it behind with the spike and everything. And look, it's got a giant can of cranberry sauce. Oh man, such a fun, fun idea for a roller coaster. I think it actually has two spikes. Right? Yeah, this one back here too. They open up the door for us so you can see how the transfer might go. Put a good amount of space in there to transfer in. 
All right, I found out a little bit more information in the fact that it is two spikes, but basically what you do is you start in the station, you're pulled back up this, and then it drops down through the station, goes through the whole track, and then goes up this spike, backwards back through, and then stopping at the station again. So, should be pretty fun, a, a family coaster. So like we were saying out front, it is everything for amusement parks and attractions and themed entertainment. For example, here is one of those mining for gems places where they sell the different troughs and things that you need to set up a gem mining operation like we saw at Fort Wilderness recently. It's fun. Like this is it. This is what you can, if you have like a, a mini golf course or a place that you would like to set up a mining operation, this is the company to see. And the name of the company is Gold River Mining. Just to give an example of some of the other things that are available here at IAPA, not just the big ride manufacturers, this is a company that makes flooring for amusement and attractions. Like you can get these, these rugs that go outside the door or even the tile carpet, that each tile can be replaced. That way you don't have to replace the entire carpet if something gets ruined, or even plank tiles, like vinyl flooring. RMC famous for their wood steel hybrids such as Gwazi, Iron Gwazi. They have also been contracted for the new Fire in the Hole family coaster coming to Silver Dollar City and they just revealed this is the ride vehicle. Pretty interested to ride this because it is a huge, huge upgrade from what was there before as far as Fire in the Hole goes. Fire in the Hole being one of the older roller coasters at Silver Dollar City just closed and now this will be what's replacing it. The largest indoor coaster in America's heartland. Look at this thing. It's huge. It's kind of like a cut out of this building. Wow. Very large. And look at this, all these different effects in here. Fire, and there's a train. Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Just to kind of show off some of the previous accolades for RMC, you can see a lot of really good stuff going on here. You know, we've got Outlaw Run. We've got Iron Rattler. We've got Storm Chaser. you got Lightning Rod. Ooh. We've got, uh, what else do we have down here? Steel Vengeance, Iron Gwazi. No, they make good coasters, like I said. Anything you can think of. Here's a company that sells just roller coaster wheels. And this looks familiar, doesn't it? It's a company called Doppelmeyer. If you haven't seen anything like this, it is very similar to the Skyliner at Walt Disney World. So we're back here at the Intamin booth. And Intamin has produced a lot of launching coasters. And this is no exception. This is a, called Falcon's Flight. It's coming to Six Flags Quidja in the Middle East. And I just want you to hear some of the stats on this roller coaster. Look, it's got a windshield. It's got a windshield on it because it goes so fast. Its max speed is 156 miles per hour. It has a height difference between the lowest and the highest point of 640 feet. It has three launches. It is 13,123 feet of track. Yeah, and it's 14 riders per train. Max number of trains simultaneously in operation is six. Look at this. There's even a spoiler on it. They had to put a spoiler on it. Look at the thickness of this windshield. Oh my gosh. See ya. Wow. This is going to be an intense ride for sure. Oh, there's a little duck right there. I wonder what the duck has to do with anything. Somebody just put that duck there. Also, look at these wheels. Look at this. This entire setup is ridiculous looking, isn't it? Wow, very impressive. A company called Aardvark. If you ever wondered where you could buy a giant tortoise that also spits water, they got you covered. A hippopotamus? You need an alligator? Here it is. You can buy all these different statues. Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters has this comment that's coming to Hershey Park. This looks very comfortable, doesn't it? Look at all the padding in here. So Comet has been at Hershey Park for 77 years. It has always run PTC trains. And this is the fifth time that they have redone the trains for Comet. And they've kind of given it a new updated paint job. They had a little bit more, a little bit different seat divider here in the center, a little bit cushier. And now they have ratcheting lap bars too. So they also have a transfer system for those guests that require wheelchairs. And it's pretty neat because it kind of rolls up to the side of the roller coaster cart. And then you can just kind of like step down into the train itself. And that way you can make the transfer a little bit easier from the wheelchair into the roller coaster train. So recently, Top Thrill Dragster closed down at Cedar Point and Zamperla is in charge of replacing it. And they are replacing it with the LSM Lightning Top Thrill 2 
at Cedar Point. Look at the size of the wheels on this guy. Ooh, buddy. Those are big. Yeah. Look at the front of this thing, too. Holy cow. This is a beast of a roller coaster train. Holy macaroni. Look at this thing. Look at the size of the wheels on this thing. They're so big. Just like the whole system for keeping it on the track is mind boggling. Look at all of this. Of course, before the day is out, we will definitely be on some rides. But I also wanted to point out some of the stats of Top Thrill 2. 420 feet tall, max speed of 120 miles per hour, track length of 3,422 3, feet, three launches, wow, one launch forward at 74 miles per hour, a launch backwards at 101, and then a final launch forward at 120 miles per hour, wow, so what is this, you launch this way, up the spike, or up this top hat, and you go backwards up the spike, do a vertical stall, and then you launch back forward and over the top of the top hat. And then a heartline roll on the way back down. Ooh, that looks like a lot of fun. I also have simulators here because these are things that could be bought for an amusement facility. Looks like a lot of fun, right? SpongeBob's crazy carnival ride, Sally Dark Ride. Crabby Patty. There he is. There's Mr. Krabs. This is coming to Circus Circus in Las Vegas. Yeah, you with the shirt. I'll make you a deal. You head inside and play the carnival games right now. I'll give you a chance to go through a second time. By getting back in line. <laughs> Decided to head over to the concession section where they're giving away free samples of various foods that you can find at theme parks. Like for instance, we're waiting in line to get some mini melts. Very similar to other frozen ice cream dots. Somebody out here making mini donuts. I'm interested in this, the donut sundae. Ooh, that sounds really good. Also right next to us is Ben's soft pretzels and the line for this. Way around the event. Got in the end of the line because I'm interested to see what all the hubbub is about. It's not too bad. You can see this pretzel sign up there. Not too long of a walk. This company called Ping right here are the people that have been making popcorn buckets. Like this one for Ant-Man. They have one for Thor here. They got Rocket back there. And they have Black Panther as well. Oh, and then the Mighty Thor back there as well. Not only do they make popcorn buckets of it, they make all kinds of other different promotional materials. Shirts, hats plushies, more popcorn buckets. Yeah. Oh, this one's for Monopoly. Company over here called Corn Popettes, and it's such an interesting idea is it's like a vending machine for popcorn. You just fill the top up with the popcorn kernels, and then it's $5. People come out, they tap it, push which one they hunt, and then it comes out at the bottom. We've almost made it up to the front, and they're making these pretzels fresh. There's another batch going into the oven right there. I'd be interested to know how the conversion is on this. Like you see this huge long line here at IAPA for pretzels. Will that convert to actual pretzel sales in your location? So it looks like this actual unit is on sale as a show floor special for $86,000. You could have your own pretzel kitchen. I mean, admittedly, that's a pretty good looking pretzel. Let's see if it was worth the wait in line. All right, let's see, let's give it a try. A little pretzel is very warm. Mm. That is very delicious. That was a really good pretzel. Wow. It's less like, you know, soft pretzels are sometimes chewy. This is more like doughy and soft. It's like eating a piece of pretzel bread or something like that. Really good. The company called Cyclone. It's a Cyclone 7. And they make these drinks kind of like spinny, and like iridescent looking drinks. I also have a machine that makes dry ice on demand. Making the dry ice right now. No, so this is actually a CO2 tank. Oh, so they use a CO2 to make the dry ice. This is our rimming tower. Well, we just started walking, so... This allows you to create a perfect rim every time. Concept is... It's really... Look 
three and a half. Stopped off at the original New York pizza, Sbarro. You know, just like Michael Scott said when he got to New York, he wanted to try some New York pizza. And all kinds of different samples. I got a little stromboli piece. This is pretty interesting. They have iPads set up. They take a selfie with you. And then the Sketchbot here comes and draws out your selfie. Pretty neat. You take a little selfie right there. And then the robot sketches you out. I have to try to figure out which one is drawing me. Is it this one? This one? Kind of feels like this might be me. What do you think? Could be any bearded man at this point. Yeah? All right, there I am. That's perfect. I love it. Do you need holiday decorations? Here they are. You can get yourself a nutcracker. It's really funny because sometimes we will see decorations that we've seen in the parks, like at Universal and stuff like that, that were bought here. Another thing that's so interesting about this show is that you, as a, as a vendor, have to have something that really catches people's eyes. In the themed entertainment industry, there's so many things that can catch your eyes. So. It's neat that there is a, there's just like a camper van here, like a, an old Airstream. Catches my eye. This guy also catches my eye. We've sort of made it over to where the simulators are. See this big old monster truck right here. This is Grave Digger, and this is actually a simulator. I know it looks like a monster truck, but it's a simulator. And I feel like we see this simulator every single year. Let's see, it should flip over here in just a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, well, there it is. There's Gravedigger. He's starting to make his way through the snow, it looks like. This one seems kind of kind of tame compared to the other one. Uh oh. Here it goes. Bullmark Robotics. These are the people that have the robots that can deliver food to tables and things like that. Pretty neat stuff. Oh, and it has different things. You can have it do a little birthday celebration. Or just like food delivery. Oh look, this one's asleep right now. This is awesome. It's like a little suit that makes it look like you are... You're carrying a dinosaur around. here selling servos with some animatronics. I like this old man. He's very angry looking. He has a thing on him that says, don't talk to me. A place called Unique Rabbit Studios. There's a rat fink right there. All kinds of different statues. There's Biggie and Pac right there. Another company called DWL Studios. Look at this gigantic orc that's right here. Wow. Look at this Zamperla ride with these monster trucks that are bouncing. They're going pretty quick. Another big aspect of IAPA is, of course, arcades. Because this is another aspect of the themed entertainment industry. Part of amusements and attractions. They also have the various companies that provide prizes for arcades. It's pretty great. There's just like things, arcades, and they're all free play. So you can play. What did I do? Do I do a different one now? All right, let's try again. I'm just in this multi-ball thing. I got them all. Let's go. Let's go. What do I get? A hundred tickets. We did it. This is pretty interesting. You never really think about it. It's like, where do these places buy these trams or these big truck vehicles? 
is where you can figure it out. Look at this gigantic, this golf cart's for sale. I can buy it. It's like a nine to 10 seater. How much? There is a, a magnet creation kiosk and you can do all these different things. And I've been doing the kids. Oliver is awesome. And then it prints it. So here's the one that I did for Jackson. Now for the show, they're not magnets, they're just cards. But pretty cool, right? We had always heard rumor of a polar coaster coming to Orlando. I don't think that idea ever came true. A couple of animatronics up front here. Animatronic dinosaurs, Santa, a Sasquatch. Kind of uncomfortable that they made him anatomically correct with nipples, but to each their own, I guess. Poison props, so that these are anima animations designed to scare. So get ready, these might be a little bit spooky. There's a spider type thing here. Oh, oh my goodness. Look out everybody, there's a big spider. What about this one? Ah! Oh my goodness gracious. He seems very unhappy. I don't know what happened. Not sure why he's unhappy. But he's okay now. He just went back to sleep. Oh no, something strange is going on here. There's like a, a lady up on the wall, it seems like. May take a second to reset here. Let's wait. Push it again. Oh, there she goes. Oh my goodness gracious. How is she holding onto the wall? She is uh, defying the laws of gravity. Let's see, here's a clown. Kind of hanging out in here. Oh my goodness gracious. He's slamming his face against the glass. He's like really hitting the glass. You can see the glass like flexing. Oh no, this guy is missing his legs. There's no way that he'll be able to, oh he moves. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Oh no, he is very unhappy. And understandably, like, his arms are very long too. He's lost his legs though. Look at some zombies. They got a great rug. Oh look, who's this lady? Oh, but her eyes are watching me. Oh no, uh oh, oh no. Be careful everybody. They come at you. He's a very, like, are you guys okay? Oh, okay, see you later. I think my favorite thing about those super spooky animatronics is right next door, there's a booth that just has grippy socks. That's what they're, that's what they're offering is, is grippy socks right next to the zombie guy. Looks like it rained a little bit while we were inside. See, they do have some outdoor exhibits as well as an entire section of inflatables over there. But it is currently raining, so I'm gonna stay inside for a little bit. Have a look around a little bit more. Maybe we'll ride some rides. So this is pretty interesting. It's like a 3D sphere that you sit inside. So we are 3D glasses, and then the seats move around. So it's kind of like four dimensions. So, oh no, what's gonna happen? The door opened. What's coming? Oh no, a zombie, look out everybody. Or a mummy, I guess. So this is kind of interesting. It's a batting cage, but instead of just the machine throwing the ball out, there's an actual pitcher on the screen and it shoots a ball out. All right, getting in line for Twist and Shout, the roller coaster. All right, front row on the roller coaster. I feel like we're gonna start moving any second now. The thing, the gate went away. It's beeping at us. Somebody lost their sunglasses over there. Oh, here we go. All right. This also gives us a chance to get a good view of some of the other areas of the show floor that we didn't get to see. Some animatronic reindeer. Here we go. Whoa! Nice and slow. And we're gonna pick up and go again. That back train is just spinning and spinning. So fun. Yeah, that's what I said. Whoa! Oh my goodness. Oh wow, okay. That's intense. Okay, so we're just constantly spinning now. Oh, we kind of stopped for a second. But I feel like we're gonna pick it back up again here around this corner. Oh geez. Okay. Oh, that's the end of the ride. We did it. We made it. I got on the ride right next door. It's kind of like a little drop tower type thing. Uh, I didn't get to catch the name of it. Like the roller coaster we went on was called Twist and Shout. This, I don't know what it's called. Here we go. We're going up. 
this is what I was talking about. This is where you can really see more of the show floor than we saw before. Oh, but we're dropping. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. Good views though. A big drop coming up. Oh! I get, I'm losing my stomach here. It's fun though. It's a good time. Here we go. Another one? It's kind of like a, a big drop for such a little thing. Jeez. Holy cow. Alright, I feel like we got one more here. Huh. Oh, that one wasn't so big. The first one, oh, we're jumping up and down now. Okay. The first one was like a real big drop. But now we're kind of just like doing like, like froggy. A frog, what do they call this thing? Like a frog bouncer, a frog hopper, a jumper thingy? What's it called? Uh. 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 Bot box? You gonna fight a bot? A robot? Whoa! Man, people love making animatronic dinosaurs, don't they? Came back over by the Mini Melts, and the Mini Melt mascot is here. What do you think the Mini Melt mascot's name is? Mini Melty and the Spoon. Exciting! They're they're saying hi to each other. <laughs> over here at the Froggy's Fog Booth, this is the company that provides all of the scents for Halloween Horror Nights. So you can see stuff like fresh dirt, hospital, holiday spice, what, haunted house? I was looking online at the different no, different names of them and there was one that was just called Fart Poop. And that's one that I'm looking for, Poop Fart. Poop Fart, there it is. And they do offer this in a cologne, if you'd like. I don't know why you would, but you could. You had a urine cologne. All right, of all the ones that they have here, they told me to do gag reflex. How do I do? I take the, the lid take off? The screw. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's not, not, not good. Kind of smells like feet a little bit. To feel it. You ever have. You, okay. I knew somebody once, they called this the thin spits. And it kind of comes up in your mouth a little bit. Okay, that's not good. I'm gonna try dumpster now. This one's dumpster. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That's terrible. So, Froggy's Fog actually won the Brass Ring Award for best new product for this. This is their Fog Machine Blaster. Look at this thing go. Yeah, that's good like a contamination haunted house or something like that and you have to disinfect somebody it's perfect you told me that i could i could pick it up and set it off it's pretty heavy right? here we go it's exciting That's pretty awesome. One of the most popular sections of the show floor is the Alcohol Beverage Innovation Pavilion. And they've got like Old Smoky over here, and Moscata, and then Craft Standard Draft Cocktails, and Dogfish, Dogfish Head Ale, and they're giving away free samples. All right, so there you have it. That was our trip out to IAPA Expo 2023. A lot of really neat stuff to see. Very excited for all the new roller coasters that were announced and all the trains that we got to see, and excited for like just the themed entertainment industry like love coming to this event every year because you never know what you're going to see or what you're going to be able to do like i got to, sh I got to fire a fog blaster uh, that's awesome and then also uh smell some really gross smells that was just the, the most recent thing that happens so that's what's in my mind because it's still kind of stuck in my nose we got to ride a few rides we got to check out all of these different food options it's a fantastic time so if you're interested in coming to this expo, we'll put a link in the description down below to the IAPA website so you can learn more about the organization and how to join and how to get to this expo. But all in all, it was a fantastic day. With that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. I'm Quinn, and now it's time to pay the price. <laughs>